When the music or the notes become too fast to single tongue with a ta-ta-ta sort of syllable, then we have to go into what we call multiple tonguing. And there are two types of multiple tonguing. There's double tonguing for duple rhythms, and there is triple tonguing for triple rhythms. And the principle of multiple tonguing is that you use both the front and the back of your tongue, rather like a seesaw. And if this is your tongue, then you would use the syllable da, and then with the back of your tongue, a g, ga, da, ga, da, ga, da, ga, like that. Many books teach t's and k's, tuku or taka. I actually prefer a softer syllable because uh, it allows the air to drive the tongue, which is a very important principle. And if you can cultivate the softer syllables at a slower tempo, then when you speed up and get to actual double tongue tempo, I believe your tongue can be a little more nimble and a little bit less machine gun like. Now I'm going to play a sequence of syllables that's sort of random, and I want you to see if you can tell what order of syllables I'm using. <laughs> Hopefully you can't tell, <laughs> because if you can't tell, that means I'm doing my job. The point is you want to match the ga to the da, the g to the d, because we're really accustomed to d's and t's. We do those all the time. It's the back of our tongue that we have to make it sound like the front of our tongue. Uh, I'll do that again just so you can hear it, and then I'll tell you what I'm using. <laughs> And that was da, da, ga, ga, da. And again, if you couldn't tell, that's a good sign. It means that I'm doing my job. And that's what I propose for you to work on your multiple tonguing. Make the G, the off syllable, whatever it is you're using, G or K, make it sound like your primary syllable so you can match them up. In order to practice this, play a whole bunch of the off syllable. So here is just a bunch of G's. This is all ga. You can play on one note, you can move around, whatever works for you, but you need to log some time playing that off syllable. And again, that was all G's just for practice. You'll notice that I'm playing very legato. As I mentioned, I believe this is key to a really good multiple tongue, is if you keep the air moving, and once again, you allow the air to drive the tongue. So, assuming that you can get that off syllable consistent and sounding like the primary syllable, your next step is to mix them up. So, um, I'm gonna give you four Ds and four Gs back and forth like that. You can go all the way up and down various scales. Now you can mix two and two if you like. And the only step left is to actually double time. So the D and the G get um, interspersed one after the other. You'll notice that I'm going very slow. This is to sort of walk you through the process so you can hear what I'm doing. And um, I'm only playing on one note. Don't try to move around until you can really get the articulations very consistent and steady. So um, here we are on one note slowly, then you would speed up the tempo a little bit at a time, still not moving around, just playing on one note. And you can keep doing that. Of course, a metronome would be um, extremely useful. You should monitor your progress. Um, so that's double tonguing. Now, to move around in double tongue requires slide arm coordination. And once again, just like we um, started with the double tonguing, you would start very slowly so that you can learn where the slide belongs at which times in the phrase. That might actually
actually still be a little bit fast if you're uh, first start starting this technique. Uh, but eventually you want to know where those off syllables are. Um, the critical moment is if you have to go over a partial on an off syllable. That requires a little more effort on your part. So knowing where those moments are is extremely important. Um, I'll give you an example. Let's think in the key of E. So the notes of the scale would be E and F sharp, G sharp, A, etc. So the very second note goes over a partial, there's a long slide shift, and it's an off syllable. This combination of events makes it extremely difficult to be coordinated. So if you were to do this slowly, so you're really aware of where the off syllable is, the G, when you're moving across a partial. In this case, I might actually be tempted to put that E way out in seventh, so I could actually avoid that situation. Okay, now, when you have a triplet meter, or triplets, then you would need an additional syllable. And what we do with triple tonguing is you have two choices. You can either say da, da, ga, over and over, so that would be da da ga 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 da This is what most books teach. Or, my preference actually is to put the G in the middle. So you would say da ga da and repeat that. Da ga da 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 like that. Which one you use? Well, it depends on you. You should try them both and choose the one that works best for you because it really depends upon your natural speech patterns. Right? So here's triple tonguing. So once you get the hang of it, you can do some pretty virtuosic things. So there's an overview of multiple tonguing.